Hello again, let's look at the next version of the adventure game. It's now split into several files, um, kind of hiding the details of how, how things work uh, from this top level file that contains more of the story and the, uh, the shape of the game. Uh, so the first thing you notice over here is that uh, in the source directory we've got several files. So here's this adventure.py and then this is a this is a package uh, which is uh, just a folder with uh, an init um, module in it and so the, the idea of an engine is it's a game engine it's the the code that uh, a game writer could use to um, to bring the game to life and uh, so the game engine has three modules in it and we'll look at them one by one um, so it could be that the, the game engine is uh, maintained by one group of people and uh, then lots of people use the engine and make their own different adventure games with it, a space game or uh, you know trains or walking around the uh, medieval forest or whatever. Um, so let's start with uh, the top level file, the adventure.py and um, you see here we're importing things from the game engine, game, place, and event. And we also use classes now. Um, so you might, uh, if you haven't seen them or you don't know about classes, go back and see my um, lessons about classes. Um, so ship game is the, is the class for this ship adventure game. And it is a subclass of game, which comes from the game engine. And when we create an instance of the ship game, we supply an introduction to the game, which here is just uh, one line, but we're using the, uh, notice these triple quotes here. So if we wanted to, we could add more lines to this and get quite a substantial introduction. Okay, next is where we define all the places that we have. And so the first place that we have is uh, called the bridge. So the bridge is a variable and to that variable we're assigning a new instance of the place class. The place class comes from the engine. And um, like in the earlier version where we created a tuple consisting of a title and a description we have, uh, when we instantiate an object of this class, we provide a title and a description. So a bridge, you're on the bridge of a spaceship sitting in the captain's chair. Now, uh, next, we provide a tuple of events that might take place when the player goes to this location. And there are three parameters that get passed when we create each event. And the first is the probability. And probabilities are often expressed as real numbers between 0 and 1. 0 being it won't happen, 1 mean, meaning it will happen, and anything in between being uh, various levels of certainty. So if it's a 50-50 chance, this would be 0 0.5. So we have this event that the intruder, that an intruder beams onto the bridge and shoots you, and the probability of that happening is one in five or 0.2. And so on average, every five times you go to the bridge, an intruder is gonna beam onto the bridge and shoot you. This last value here is a number, and it is the um, amount that's added to your health. And uh, so, of course, if you add negative 50 to your health, you're subtracting 50 to your health, uh, from your health. And um, so next is another event with a lower probability. And the ship's doctor gives you a health boost. And here, this is a positive number, so that uh, increases your health. Okay, so just um, we're creating a place. We describe it, and we supply the events. Each event has a probability and a description and a change to your health. 
Okay, so we're creating the, the ready room, which has no events, and the lift. And um, 0 0.05 probability that the ship's android will be on the lift and says hello to you. Then the lounge. And notice this is a probability of one, so it's, uh, it's an absolute certainty that every time you go to the lounge, your health is going to improve by 10. These next four lines create the transitions between the places. And from the bridge, you can go to the ready room on the lift. From the ready room, you can go to the bridge, and so on. And the next thing we do is we set the starting location to be the bridge. Then we create an instance of the ship game class, and we call the play method on it, and that makes the game play. So let's play the game. And here's what we see. Welcome to Ship Adventure. That came from the introduction here. And uh, you are on the bridge of a spaceship sitting in the captain's chair. That's because we set the starting location to bridge. And uh, you are on the bridge of a spaceship is the description for that place. And our health is 100. And we can go to these places, the ready room or the lift. So let's go to the ready room. And now we're in the captain's ready room. And nothing happened there. We'll go back to the bridge. And uh, nothing happened there. We'll go to the lift. And from here we can go to the lounge and the bridge. So we'll go to the lounge. Now notice that our health improved. Back to the lift. Back to the bridge. And if I played it enough, uh, then the intruder would beam onto the bridge. Um, but that's enough for now, so I'll type 0 and then it exits. Let's look now at these three modules that make up the game engine. So here's game. This is the game class. And you'll recall that we uh, subclass the game class with our ship game. So our ship game inherits features from the game class. Here's the game class again. This sets the health to 100 at the beginning. And uh, so here's this play method. And you remember we called the play method here. The play method prints the introduction and sets up the main loop that repeats until, until we exit in various ways. And this prints a blank line. It prints the description of the current location. And then it examines all the events. Uh, so back to the events. So let's say we're in the bridge. There are two events here. So that code will look at each of these events in turn. And it'll call the process method on the event. And when we look at the event class in the event module, we'll see what the process method does. Uh, but it returns a value, which is the change in your health. So it's a, it's a zero or a negative number or a positive number. And we add that to the health. Then if your health falls below zero, we print that's it for you. And then the program stops. And then we, uh, if we haven't stopped the program, then we display your current health. And then we call this transition method, which is below here. And so here's what the transition method does. It finds, uh, it assigns to this transitions variable the uh, transitions for the current location. And then it says you can go to these places. And uh, this code we talked about in the other version of the adventure game. We enumerate the transitions, which gives us an index and a transition for each one. And then we print index plus one and the title of the transition. So this gives us the menu of choices. Where do you want to go? And then we call raw input to choose one of the um, options. And if it's 0, we quit. Otherwise, we set the location to uh, the selected transition. Let's look at the place class. This is much simpler. It is a place in the game with a title, description, and events that can occur there. 
And uh, this doesn't do anything except store the title, the description, and the events. Let's look at event now. It, an event has a probability of it occurring and a message that appears if it does occur and the health change that results if it does occur. So these are saved into the instance. And here's the process method that we saw called a moment ago. And we, when we go to a place, we process, we call the process method on all the events in that place. And random is a function from the random module. And when you call it, you get a number between 0 and 1, which is uh, in the same range of probabilities. The probabilities that we're interested in are between 0 and 1. So uh, uh, let's say the probability is 0.1, and you generate a random number between 0 and 1. About 1 out of 10 times, it's going to be less than 0.1. So this is a nice way to uh, do things according to the probability that was specified. Uh, so if, it, if the event does happen, then we display the message and then we return the health change value so that it can be added to the player's health. If the event doesn't happen, then we return zero. So now that you've seen the three classes of the game engine, let's just go back to the top level, the game, and uh, remember how they're used. So game, place, event, are imported and we create our ship game based on the game. Uh, we set the introduction, we create our places and specify the events that go with the places, set up the transitions, create an instance of the game object and call play. And that's it. Go grab the source and run it and make your games. And I think we'll continue with this um, add some sounds and eventually make this a simple graphical program. Have fun.